<clears throat> All right, so let me just give the introduction review first and uh, let's just see if it's working or not. Because you know, uh, like it's also my uh, first time doing live, so I'm not sure. <laughs> I've not done it before, I really appreciate you doing it, trust me. Yeah. Cool. So uh, let me just uh, you know give the brief about uh, you know uh, the all of these things. So just like as I've also mentioned Priya, like so many people just like me who are you know not able to uh, like who who don't have anyone who can actually guide them. Like uh, if uh, you want to study abroad and uh, who don't have the in-depth knowledge of many universities. So that's why I am in a mission who can actually you know uh, help other people just like me. To you know, provide uh, with some informations about many universities, give them some reality checks, like mm -hmm, how these mm -hmm. kind of things are working over there, and uh, as well as like uh, you know, I am uh, also eager to tell everyone that I want to share my journey also from here on, and uh, I will also I will actually uh, do this continuously till I reach abroad, and uh, so you guys can actually watch me my uh, you know my journey and every single thing. So uh, like my name is Jet first thing first and uh, like in today's uh, like let me just give the uh, you know all of the details really first in the description box yeah cool so I have pasted all of the details now I'm just uh, you know telling about all of the things so in this today's uh, podcast we have a really special guest who has completed her masters in uh, human resource management from the University of Edinburgh People who don't know about University of Edinburgh, let me just tell you the one thing. Just search it on Google and you will find some crazy things, right? Like it's the number fourth university in the entire UK and number 14th in the entire world as per QS rankings. And right now, we uh, will actually divide this video into three segments. In the first one, we'll talk about, uh, you know, the details like uh, why did she choose uh, University of Edinburgh and things like that. In the second one, We'll ask her about her experience, her current experience as an international student. And in the third one, finally, like about the job markets, average CTC, and you know, the PSW problem, which is uh, UK is facing right now. And uh, like, I think we can uh, add a lot of value through these videos. So please consider subscribing this channel. And I have also, as I've mentioned that I have, uh, uh, you know, put all of the uh, links and everything of our LinkedIn portal. Uh, in our description box if you want to reach out to us and if you have any kind of questions any kind of queries feel free to just go to our linkedin uh, you know uh, linkedin portal and just randomly message us it's completely fine so yeah that's the whole thing let's introduce our special guest priyadarshi hi jay hi thank you so much for inviting me to the podcast it's my and pleasure. i'm I, I, I totally understand where everyone is coming from in India. I mean, I know a lot of people do want to go abroad and they do want to perceive their masters or their passion in there, but they might not be very sure which might be the right choice for them. And they might have a lot of delusions and choices in front of them and they might be overwhelmed. But um, yeah, just breaking it down and hearing from a person who's already in abroad, who's already gone through the process, actually really helps who is wanting to start their process and I really appreciate the initiative and today whatever I, I know I've already gone through I can always share and um, whatever yeah the bit even a little bit if I can be helpful in this process I would be very grateful can and I, you me, can ask you me anything <laughs> <laughs> you can ask me anything and I'm here to answer and uh, I, I was just telling Jay as well I'm not feeling so great so I might just cough in between here and there. I'm, that's very unprofessional of me. Just please bear with me, guys. <laughs> <coughs> so, so as I have already mentioned that uh, the uh, you know, I'm just uh, dividing this video into three segments. In the first one, we'll discuss about uh, you know your experiences, like uh, you know when you were in India. How did the uh, you know like idea came in your mind that you want to do MSc in Human Resource Management from abroad, specifically? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I think uh, just like you, Jay, I, I wanted to do somewhere in abroad, but I was not very sure where. And um, I actually had few, not very few, but to be very frank, a lot of friends doing in US. Everyone just 
they always i think the first choice for the indian kids is always us and canada of course of course and yeah and i think canada is actually a very good choice as well because they get their pr very quickly mm. there and yeah. us is not as easy as canada but actually for me the one reason which um attracted to me towards uk was the one year course Okay. because actually i was in a time crunch and i had already 3 years of work experience before mm -hmm. so i cannot afford to break from my working life career and do studies for like 2 years because <coughs> i used to be earning before so i know mm -hmm. the pain of you know uh, getting dependent again asking your parents for money for know, the college uh, tuition okay. fee the pocket money and everything <coughs> So I think the first very uh, attractive thing for me about the UK was one year's masters. <coughs> so I knew like after a year definitely I can just get back into my working life and one year break is not a huge part. Mm -hmm. And um and the other personal reason for UK is because it's near to India. Yeah. You know like 9 hours yeah. 9 hours straight flight I can be in Manchester or London or Edinburgh. So mm -hmm. I think that's that's a huge thing as well. to go to us the flights are expensive and you lose actually like more than a day or half mm -hmm. like i think one and one and a half a day you lose to travel to us so i really thought if i'm in uk i can be near to my parents so if i want to be coming back home i can even afford to come like twice yeah, a year exactly. whereas the same case if i was in us it might might not be possible <laughs> that's true but uh, why the uh, you know msc in human resource management i i've just been through your linkedin portal and you have worked in cisco <laughs> if i'm not wrong right Yeah. So sorry. Uh, you have worked in Cisco, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I didn't hear you that part. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, I did my actually. Yeah, my my story is very peculiar and interesting. I would say because um, I used to be an um, electronics and network engineer before. Mm -hmm. I did my uh, B Tech in VIT Valor. Yeah. And um, I straight away got um, campus recruited into Cisco. I did my internship and I did my three years of work experience in Cisco. To be very honest, Cisco was a great company. I was very happy in there. But I think I did feel like I was missing something. I was not doing something which I loved the most. I was good at what I was doing. Doesn't mean that you know I really liked what I was doing. <coughs> so I was kind of in a search of where I wanted to find what exactly I liked. So uh, I started doing a lot of online courses, and the a lot of online courses, which the one which most uh, interesting to me was psychology courses. Right. So I did uh, social psychology. I know that. exactly because yeah 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 because uh, um, Cisco does have like a partnership with Udemy. Okay. And you can do how many of the courses you want, and it's totally free. <laughs> okay. So it's only Udemy, it's or like it's uh, with uh, other uh, also. No, it's just Udemy. So uh, yeah, Cisco just allows you to do in Udemy free. So I was like, yeah, why not just use yeah, the Cisco resources and then gain something? Of course. <coughs> and I think that's how I started a uh, few courses online. And you know that was the time when I was working from home, mm -hmm. so I had a lot of time in my hand, and I was actually really bored. So I wanted to do something else yeah. uh, apart from my actual job. So I started doing psychology courses, and it actually was very, very interesting for me because. Psychology ex exactly explains you why a person behaves a certain way. Mm. They might be angry. You just, you just, everyone notices they're just angry. But psychology is a way of trying to understand why or what got them angry in the first place. Why, why are they behaving like this? Because in general, not a person, a single person can be angry throughout their life career. Yeah. So something has happened which has triggered them to get anger, angry at that point. So. That's true. Yeah, so those things was really interesting for me, and I did a lot of psychology courses. I like I have done um, um, crime psychology. Okay. I did uh, social behavioral psychology, okay. and a uh, few other uh, very very interesting courses in um, Udemy. And I was very excited, like a uh, you know, uh, like I used to go to my dad, and I'm like, Daddy, do you want to know what I learned today? And I was like a small kid who comes back from school and say, Yeah, I got a star. So you you, you were doing excited. this at the point of like uh, you were doing your job. Yes, I'm not even kidding. Yeah, so That's I was like, great. okay, so I, I, then I realized this made me more happy. Mm -hmm. So and then I tried actually, um, I tried becoming a psychiatrist. I was just trying to figure out how to become a psychiatrist in okay. India, and then it took me like eight years. So the career plan was like, I have to wait for eight years to become a psychiatrist in India because I was always already an engineer, engineering mm -hmm. person. So yeah. I had to wait like eight years, which was not technically possible. So the next choice which I was trying was. uh hr 
because oh. HR is actually a study which actually involves psychology along with business studies. Mm -hmm. So a HR is expected to understand employees' emotions, trying to understand if they're happy in a company, expected and also trying to understand the business management's position yeah. to see if you know your business, your employer is happy having this employee in their company. Are they having enough budgets to accommodate these employees? So there's a lot of simple little things of psychology involved in HR. And I really thought, I think actually a lot of my friends really helped, I should say, because I was just telling all of my friends, you know, like I, I really like psychology, but becoming a psychiatrist in India is not possible here after because I've already, like after four years of my college, I've been three years in work, like it's like seven years, I'm already late. Yes. So I cannot afford like eight more years. And they all suggested, you know, like HR might be a thing because I am a people person, like I'm mm. a very people person. Yeah. I like to speak with people and trying to understand what they want. And I'm very much interested in making sure they're okay. Mm -hmm. So I think because I was a very happy employee in Cisco. I'm like, Cisco took care of me so well that I didn't want to leave the company. So, and then I decided, you know, I want to become a HR where I can make sure every employee in every company is happy and do not want to leave the company because I think in this era it's just like always about job hopping yeah. like okay one year in this job and you don't like you want to sh but <coughs> for the salary hike yeah like I, I also face a lot of things like that exactly so what I wanted to focus is like how to make sure an employee is actually happy and how how to make sure he retains mm -hmm. and he stays back in a company so that's what i wanted to look forward to yeah and i think that's that's how i kind of yeah lead towards the hr path and i really did like the job which um does involve psychology as well and it's also towards the management side not very much of the technical side so i kind of thought this was uh, my niche point or my niche interest in it so mm -hmm. i kind of started pursuing in it uh, but to be honest, uh, in HR itself, there are a lot of different fields and a mm. lot of different courses available. Yep. So once I decided it was UK for me and not US because of the other reasons I mentioned before. So I was like, OK, so it's UK and I know I want to do HR, but what are the courses I'd be interested in? So I mm. think I just did a lot, lot of research. I just went to every top university, like every other kid, I was like, OK, I want to be the best college. I'm like, OK, Oxford. OK, yeah. I'm like, well, I want to be in Oxford. So what are the options they have for HR? What are the courses they have? I want I just went through all the courses mm -hmm. and I just really checked if that matches my interest, if matches that aligns with yeah. what I want to be in the future, because the course is just for one year. If you just rush, you just want to do any course, you could have done it in India itself, but you want mm -hmm. to do something which will lead to your uh you know your passion career in the future yeah. so you should yeah. make sure that you, you're aligning your expectations and your imaginations with the course so you end up in a job which you might like mm -hmm. working you know yeah. you want to get up every day at eight o'clock and then do it straight for five days you want to be in a job which you love yeah so that's what i chose and i think that is international human resource management for me it was not just the normal hr it was international human resources management okay. because i wanted to be because cisco is all already it was a multinational mnc company mm, yeah. and so i want to be in a company which does have like a subsidiaries in different different parts of the world mm -hmm. and still how do they manage employees in those um countries so that was a little um interesting for me because it's a very huge concept if you think about it because you know cisco as a company might have their own brand values yeah. but if they try to implement the same brand values in every country it might not work out because mm -hmm. they need to localize the practices for the people in the country mm -hmm. so i think for for like a simple example if i if i say take holidays okay yeah. so if a cisco is actually um a us company and they do have a branch in india japan and other parts of the world and if they just have a fixed leave policy for every countries they say for yeah. christmas for easter for good friday and everything it might not be applicable for yeah. india like yeah. india diwali and navratri is like a huge festival so i want some like 10 days holiday for my yes, diwali exactly. and not for my christmas exactly. we do not celebrate christmas not everyone celebrates christmas in india so you have to make sure and especially India is like a very um, unique case because India does have Christians, Muslims, Hindus and everyone in different proportions. So mm -hmm. you cannot be like, OK, Diwali is a huge festival. OK, then you, you can only have for Diwali. That's not possible. You have to give yeah. for Ramzan as well. Yeah. So how do you how do you customize your policies, HR policies for different countries mm -hmm. is very important. And I think I was intrigued in that instead of just reading the normal HR, I wanted to make sure that I was 
eligible to be um, making policies globally. And I think that's how I ended up with IHRM in no, UK. Sir. All right, cool. That's a pretty like that's a pretty great story actually. And what's your dream right now? Like uh, currently you're working as a technical recruiter, right? So what's your like dream? Like uh, after five years or after four years, whatever you want to stay in UK or you want to come back in India, and what's the plan? Uh, to be very honest, um, the starting salary or the compensation, the respect, the job aspects, the job mm. in general as a HR in India is not so much valued at That's the true. moment. Yeah. So yeah, so I did see, I really want to become a HR, but I was not the HR who wanted to be like approving leads and giving their salary. Mm. I was not them. I wanted to be a HR. I want to be a HR who can actually make a change yeah. in a company. I should be having such a power for me to make a change. So I still feel like, uh, definitely there are a lot of exceptions and it's not like all companies in India are like that, I would mm. say, but most of the companies in India do have a perception, say HR are not a very important yeah. department of a company, yeah, they don't which is work. something they just, you know, sit definitely, around, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, which is very, it, it's very shocking for me to be very honest because HR is the actually very, very, very important department, yeah, especially exactly. after the pandemic, because you need to decide if it's going to be fully hybrid or if mm. it's going to be remote, fully remote. You need to make sure there are a lot of small things which will make employee comfortable. Nowadays, it's very, it's not very easy to make yeah. an employee comfortable because they leave Zoom, they go to Google, they leave Google, <laughs> they go to Microsoft. There is a yeah. lot of options available for every single employee nowadays, yeah. which <coughs> which means that the HR of the company need to work a lot better than what they used to work before. Mm. So I would want to come back to India, but not right away. Maybe I really want to work in London, the, you know, literally the world hub, they say it's UK because when Australians are awake, we are awake. When US people are awake, UK is awake. So yeah. that was a very one good point of being in the UK as well, because you can connect with people globally in different time zones. So when I'm in my mornings, my Australian and Indian, my Asian community fully is awake so I, I chat with them and my afternoon time I chat with the US people because they get up at that time mm. so I'm having a window where actually I can contact with everyone in global which is actually not possible in different countries because mm. if you go to US very yeah. simply say you get up you get up in the morning it's night for Indians yeah. you can't do your night is morning for them so you, you actually do not connect with their business hours of different countries but that is the one good point of UK so I really want to be in UK and the UK work culture is amazing I would say they do have a very very strict boundaries for professional life and personal life the work life balance is totally amazing here so I really would want to be here understand their culture understand the you know the pros and cons of UK and working in the UK and definitely then you know after a few few years maybe I can definitely go down to India and then I can impart the wisdom which I've gained from here which might be helpful later. Uh, like uh, have you have any kind of thoughts in your head like uh, you want to uh, start a startup or something like that? Um, actually I uh, no not really because okay. I always wanted to be in a company which is already established where and then you know i want to be in a position where i can be like a svp or whatever mm -hmm. just to make sure that i am in a power where i can make my own policies as well if i want to give a wellness day for my employees i should be able to be in the power to give them yeah. i don't want my employer saying you know actually that's a huge budget cut it's not possible if you give one more extra days mm -hmm. for employees it might not be very helpful for us i don't want to be in that position i want to be in a place where you know if employee really deserves a holiday for mental wealth yeah. mental health sorry i should be in a position where I can afford that. So I was not always in the um, idea of a startup, but I always wanted to start off my business as a side hustle okay. because I am interested in a dance. I do Barzanatium a lot. Okay. So I was like, if I, if I, in case, you know, um, start off something in side, as a side hustle, it might be a dance class mm -hmm. in well, the you UK. You can start it in the yeah. UK itself. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was about to say. Like, you know, uh, because my one year, my student life was pretty much hectic all the time okay. I had my assignments I was doing my part-time to make sure I get my pocket money here mm -hmm. I was doing some internships in the site so it was very jam-packed because it's just a one year mm -hmm. with yes. you know so much information in the year yeah. so I was quite busy but now I've got a job and I know it's just nine to five the five days so yeah. the weekends I'm really free so I, I can really start doing something else as well yeah you, you should do that like that's that's gonna be crazy and uh, like talking about the universities, so please tell me like how many universities you applied for. 
Okay, that's a good question. Uh, I did apply for 10 universities. Okay. And like, I'm not sure. I mean, I, like any other normal human being, I was very scared. I'm like, what if all the 10 universities reject me? So I applied for two or three more, okay. which was, uh, um, you know, free of charge. You, you know, okay. there's no application fee. Mm -hmm. So I think I applied for around 13 universities. That's great. <laughs> and uh, the, among the 13 universities, the 10 universities were the top and the top, like top 10 universities. Yeah, that. yeah, that's right. So it was all, uh, <clears throat> I applied for LSE, King's College London, University of Edinburgh, University of Birmingham, University of Glasgow, uh -huh. University of Manchester, obviously, <clears throat> um, University of Lancaster, Durham University. Yeah, I mean, I had a quiet... Um, um, confusions whether I should be going to Ireland or UK mm -hmm. but obviously UK had much more opportunities yeah. than Ireland so I compared even though there are very few good colleges in Ireland I really thought the opportunities are much better in the UK and especially after the Brexit there's a lot of job openings like mm -hmm. I can say that trust me yeah. because even when I was applying for job every day I used to apply for 10 and the next day 10 used to come up more Every day I used to apply for 10, like for three months. So right. there are a lot of job opportunities in the UK. And I think that's how I selected UK. And the universities, I just saw the QS ranking. I saw the courses, which I liked. So I applied for the top 10 universities. Yeah, that's great. Like talking about my experience, like uh, for an example, I'm just, you know, to please just, uh, you know, don't uh, think like I'm a greedy person or something like that. Oh, but, no, 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 no. Don't worry about it. Still, like, uh, you know, like uh, I have a little bit around like eight months of experience as an uh, IT recruiter, right? And uh, I have a thought in my mind, like uh, after doing around like two to three years of experience, after getting two to three years of experience, then uh, I should, you know, uh, go to UK or maybe to Canada, maybe to US. I don't know. I, I still don't know, right? But uh, the okay. thing is, uh, like uh, UK is in my top priority. Second one is the Canada, and the third one is the US because US is too much expensive, and I can't afford mm. it. <laughs> cool. That's so, true as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and and the PR thing is also there, man. Like, if if I'm uh, you know spending a lot of money, then I would be expecting at least like uh, I should get a PR or I should get a great job which I can you know pay off my debts and everything, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So these are the mm -hmm. kind of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second part is like. Uh, after gathering on a two to three years of experience what do you think like is it gonna be uh, you know easy for me to get a job over there after completing a master's uh, or like maybe mba or something like that in the uk yes yes to be very honest i have friends who do not have experience they come immediately after their undergrad okay. and i have ex i have friends who actually have experience and who are here yeah. so i always would advise any of my friends or colleagues to definitely have some experience and come abroad because it is, it is definitely easier. Yeah. yeah, I think even two years is perfectly all right because cool. see, in an interview, what they do is generally they ask a lot of scenario based questions they want you to answer. They will be like, you know, okay, so in this case, if you're you are given so much of task and still you have deadlines and still how will you come up with it? Mm. So there are a lot of scenario based questions which you can answer only if you have worked. Yeah. Every scenario in your college is very common for everyone. So that is actually a college experience is actually same for everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone had the assignments, everyone, it was hard for them. They still coped up. They were in clubs. They were still doing different, different activities and still they all managed. But your work experience is very unique and your work experience talks a lot. Even if you have one year, I would say it's a great thing. So two years, three years is perfect. Okay. Definitely having a work experience and then you come here is very ideal. I mean, I'm a HR, but I can tell you myself, you know, There'll be a lot of jobs which says entry level, but you know, below if Over you just scroll down, exactly, exactly. They need at least yeah, two if you to scroll three down, years definitely, yeah. yeah, they definitely expect two to three years experience. And also, I can tell it in another perspective because I am actually a source and now, and I'm getting a lot of resumes to screen through. I can tell you, if ten candidates apply, and every ten candidates do have like done a very good college, they have good grades. Mm -hmm how do i reject people i need something else to reject yeah. them i'm like okay fine then i just go with people who are experienced like yes. there are like three four so i'm like i need to have some other criteria for me to narrow down people and that's actually the work experience so if you have work experience it's which is better for me i understand i have a lot of freshers you know they're like someone has to give us a job for us to start full so i mm -hmm. totally understand that but yeah. when you have a very difficult competition when there are like 100 candidates and some few candidates are very exceptional because they have a work experience we are 
forced to go with them because mm. we have choices left. Yeah. We have a very good collections of choices, and why will we go with someone who does not have experience? Instead, we will try to give with someone who's ex who's experienced. So I would always suggest to have some good experience before you could come here. All right, and uh, like uh, talking about the you know eligibility criteria, I'm just talking about the University mm -hmm. of Edinburgh, right? And I'm also okay. just talking about the MSc part, <coughs> MSc in uh, Human Resource yeah. Management, or for the viewers, it might be for uh, MSc in uh, like Marketing or Finance, whatever, right? So mm -hmm. what are the mm -hmm. uh, you know eligibility criteria that University of Edinburgh requires? Like you know you need to have these 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 things, then only we can actually acquire you. So what are these things? Uh, so definitely, yeah, you you really need to have um, good grades in your undergrad. Okay. It does not have to be exceptional. They don't they don't just take nine pointers or ten pointers. That's not the case. Okay. So even if you're somewhere around above seven, I would say it is totally fine cool. for ten CGPA in India. And you need to have an IELTS score which is more than seven. Mm -hmm. Seven seven point five is totally good. Mm -hmm. And um, work experience is not. It's not mandatory because I do have a lot of course mates who do not have any work experience. Okay. So it's not mandatory, but it is better for your job search. Like after mm. your master is done, when you go for a job search, your work experience is really good. But your work experience is not absolutely mandatory for the college entry itself, if you ask me. Okay. And uh, I think that's it mainly. And they really do look at your SOPs. I would really suggest everyone to have a very authentic personal SOPs instead of just taking from friends or internet or anything because I have tried that as well oh, I just told my open story you know because it was very hard for me because I was an engineer mm -hmm. who wanted to become a HR I have so much competition from people who has done BSc or you know they have done uh, B arts bachelor in arts in human resource itself mm -hmm. and who wants to do masters in that so obviously they are having higher advantage than yep. me so i was in a difficult position i was an engineer i had to convince my college that i want to become a hr so i just told my own story you know i just told the exact thing i told you i'm passionate about people i want to make sure people's life are better in offices mm -hmm. so employee relations was my niche point i told them I, I sold the same story so i would say everyone just in your sops have a very authentic personal thing just say your own story and it always helps instead of just making it up or taking from anywhere else. Just exaggerating a few things is totally fine. Yeah. But never take it from your counselors or from the internet. It's not going to help. Just say your own story and that will always be a better choice and it will be advantageous for you. So these things are the main things I would say. And it is, and uh, like, in my personal opinion, I would say it's not very difficult to get into UK mm -hmm. when compared to US. US is a little more difficult, yeah, yeah. In, in, at least in case of MBA and all, you need to have a GRE. So mm -hmm. GRE is not very mandatory thing in UK. So I'd still say it's a little bit easier to get into UK. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I could be totally wrong. People might have different opinions, but this is my experience because I have tried applying. I have friends who have uh, tried applying for in US mm -hmm. and UK as well. So. I, Comparatively, I would say UK is much easier and the process is much simpler. That's Getting a visa and everything. Visa, <laughs> even for the US, it's a little hard. So. That's good. But uh, talking about the recent, uh, like, you know, PSW thing which is happening over there, man, I, I'm like, uh, should I just prepare for UK only? Or like, I'm also, you know, open my uh, you know, window for the Canada part. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens. So Canada is, Canada is really a good choice as well yeah. if you can survive the cold. That's it. Simple as that. If you can survive the cold, you can. You are a person for Canada. There is nothing into it because Canada is also very welcoming. Mm -hmm. They have better policies, and it's very, it's very immigrant friendly. To be very honest, yep. you know, they're very welcoming of any immigrants. It's not like you have to fight your way through. It's not like that. Yeah. Cool. That's great. And uh, when you're in India, I'm sorry, man. I'm just talking too much. Please just uh, have your. No, 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 no. Go ahead. No, good. My throat is bad, so you don't worry about it. I'm always happy to help. Trust me. All right, cool. So when you're in India and uh, you were just, you know, you have decided. All right. So these are the things. These are my lists, mm -hmm. and everything is fine. I am going to University of Edinburgh. And like you have received the all of the informations that yeah you have been selected and everything. So what are the steps that you have followed? Like you know from the very beginning. Like, you know like uh, okay maintaining an excel sheet of the universities which i'm applying for these end of things yeah yeah, yeah. so i i'm sorry are you asking after i got the acceptance letter yes, yes the after college you got or the acceptance letter yes. after the college okay yeah. okay so um in my case it was a little difficult for me 
to select the college because I had like 13, I applied for 13 colleges and I got into almost all the colleges. So I was, I was like, okay, yeah, what, where should I go into? So my top priorities were um, University of Edinburgh, University of Manchester and uh, King's College London. So these three were the tops uh -huh. in all the three I applied, at, like everything I applied. Uh -huh. And King's College London was ruled out because London is very expensive and yeah. it's very crowded and I yeah. didn't want to be associated with any kind of crowd and that's why I came out of India. So okay. I'm like, no more crowd, please. <laughs> so it was a very, very tough competition for me to select between University of Edinburgh and University of Manchester. Okay. I'll tell you the I'll tell you the pros and cons of their colleges, but I'm very, very, very happy I chose University of Edinburgh at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So I almost, not almost, to be very frank, I paid my deposit for both the colleges because okay. I, I was not sure where I want to be going to. Good. I paid for University of Manchester, University of Edinburgh as well. Because University of Manchester, the good point is the the living cost is a little cheaper in Manchester. All right. The cost of living is a little cheaper in Manchester when you compare Edinburgh and also it's a little warmer obviously um, so Manchester is a little warmer it's a little cheaper so I wanted to come to University of Manchester and obviously the Manchester course is also very good mm -hmm. I spoke with alumni of Manchester as well University of, Man University of Manchester and they were really helpful they were really good the course was also absolutely fitting with what I expected but I think I at, at the end of the day I chose University of Edinburgh because it was better in the ranking yeah yeah, and like I if would you say can just search is... in the Google, right? Like, I'm sorry, I'm just interrupting. If you can just search no, no, in the ahead. Google that, uh, you know, top colleges for MSc in or human resource management, the University of Edinburgh in the top right now. So It is, it yeah. is. So, I mean, why I was a little um, confused about University of Edinburgh is because it was in Scotland and I know it's going to be super cold. Mm -hmm. And actually, to be very frank, Edinburgh's weather is not friendly at all you know okay. it rains it's windy it's it's suddenly super cold it suddenly snows it's 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 so fluctuating it's just literally annoying you know you need to take a windbreaker an umbrella a water waterproof boots mm -hmm. every time okay. even gloves and everything your hands get frozen so everything is a little complicated according to the weather wise mm -hmm. But I think the professors and the quality of education in the University of Edinburgh is absolutely amazing. Okay. The professor's knowledge, you know, once you talk with the professors, I'm like, they're so inspiring. They're so down to earth. They just, they like anything you ask me and you mail them, you they reply with like a huge ass message. It's not even like, um, it's not like a single line. They 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 appreciate you asking doubts. Okay. <coughs> That's and actually love it. pretty, you know, uh, like uh, that's actually pretty <laughs> great, you know, like uh, over in India, like I, I, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm supposed to say it, but uh, you know, in India, there are so many uh, like rumors or I won't say it's rumor, but uh, yeah, still whatever. If, uh, if you can just, you know, uh, ask a professor that, uh, you know, I, I'm not good with it and could you please just help me out on it. You might get some negative, uh, you know, comments of that, but yeah, it's cool. Yeah, exactly. No, the, the like the quality of education in the UK is really good. Really you know, they encourage yeah. you to come up with your own views. The, hmm. the, you know, that's the thing I like about them. So in the UK, I think I was telling my friend as well here. Okay. There is no right or wrong answers. It's all, all your right. own perspective. Cool. How do you put your perspectives into words is actually the education here. You can argue exactly the opposite thing. You can argue exactly the same thing. That's That does not matter to them. There is no right or wrong answers. You can say anything. Just back up your answers with why do you think that mm. is, right. is what is important here. You know, you can say anything. You could say I am ugly. I'm beautiful. You can say anything. Okay. But why do you think that? Why do you think or why do you think do you have like any stance to support it is what is actually matters at the end of the day so mm -hmm. coming with your own you know that's actually increased a lot of your imagination because you can say anything you want and you have so much of freedom and obviously you have like varieties of internet source to yep. complement your um research or theory so yep. i think the quality of education in general is amazing here and i loved my student life that's great man like uh, for an example if you ask me then i would say ki, uh, in my uh, you know ssc board like it was not that great right? uh, from the higher education like you know from the higher secondary it was uh, you know mm -hmm. like a little bit good and in the college i have done uh, like uh, i was in the top 10 cool 
and uh, I knew that like uh, I want to do a master's abroad so uh, I was just go through some you know some podcasts just like this and uh, there were some of the guys who actually mentioned that uh, you should have done some startups or something like that like do something like if you're not good uh, you know your grades are not good then do at least something then I actually started my own NGO and uh, as oh. well as yeah like uh, for an example for my education I was in a commerce background uh, at the first okay and in the second part I chose uh, bachelors of business administration specialization was in hospital mm-hmm. management healthcare sector okay and okay. after that I jumped into HR so it was uh, you know diverse background which I'm having and uh, as well as I am uh, you know like uh, this uh, specifically like you know uh, MBA abroad I have started and as well as I have the NGO and these kind of things are happening and uh, let's see man like I don't know like uh, would I be able to go over there and let's see let's hope for the best I, I don't know. no no definitely as long as you're chasing your dreams I yeah. would say that is the great that's literally very appreciable thing you know you should not give up i did not give up trust me when i had i have my i had my own set of complications as well i was not able to mm. get the loan in the right time i okay. was not getting my visa in the right time everything was a little delayed for me i still made it because i did not give up i'm like i was very sure i wanted to be in a place where the lifestyle was better mm. the quality of education was better the medical services were better everything is much better here and i knew i always wanted to learn i was having an open mind and i was like i was looking forward to explore mm. i think that's one mindset everyone should be having before coming here you should be they should not restrict themselves to be like i want to be like this i want to be like that just be open just have a blank slate when you come here yeah. so when you actually go through different experience automatically you know what you want to do and that will help you grow as well do that's not true. give up and uh, you have just mentioned about uh, the loan right so uh, let's just quickly talk about the fee structure and the scholarships of edinburgh so you know the university of edinburgh so could you please just guide me through that once uh definitely so i think university of edinburgh does have a lot of scholarships okay uh it has a lot of um country wise sponsorship mm-hmm. as well as lgbt yeah. um sponsorship and they have chevening as well and um they do have one more so i did apply for two i mean i did not get both because it's it's a huge competition so it's not mm. like course wise it's for the whole business school they try to give like one or two so it's very hard to get okay. in okay. but obviously this schol- scholarship uh, scholarships are very helpful if you get it mm-hmm. because if you you'll, no worries uh, oh yeah yeah sure you can hear me now yes yes i can hear you okay perfect yeah that's okay okay. all right cool so uh you have mentioned about uh, you know you have received the loans like uh, you have taken some loans so could you please just tell me like uh, you know uh, how did you receive the loans like why did you have applied is it some uh, nbfc or something like that um yeah i mean i would uh, suggest people going with educational loan Mm -hmm. because i wanted educational loan i did not get i was i was actually um I think my acceptance or my cast letter was very delayed. Okay. They, I got it very, very late towards end of the August or something. So that was very late for me to process the educational loan. I could, I couldn't, ha- I didn't have time. Mm-hmm. So I had to get a different loan. Uh, but yeah, so in general, my course is about uh, twenty six thousand pounds, okay. which is actually I would say it's better for students coming up now because when I paid my fees the pound was like 105 mm-hmm, rupees mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. but now it's just like 92 or 90 yeah. so it's actually much better now but uh, when I paid it was like 26,000 pounds mm. so which equals like around 26 lakhs to be exact yeah. and I got a loan for 40 lakhs because obviously okay. 26 lakhs is a tuition fee and but the, you need uh, 10 yes, lakhs yes, yeah. Yeah, you, you need definitely 10 lakhs for your accommodation and you need some money when you come here because you have to pay the deposit, house deposit here mm-hmm. or student accommodation or whatever you yeah. need for the groceries and obviously the pocket money you need to have few more lakhs in hand. I mean, I would say maybe two lakhs in hand mm-hmm. and the others for your food. So okay. I got like a 40 lakh loan, which I have to earn and pay back. <laughs> <laughs> all right so like uh what do you think within uh how many years or uh, within how many months you can just be all of the things mm, that's, that's a good question like, because uh, i'm sure that you have uh, done some uh, you know uh, financing and everything make some excel sheets and everything right <laughs> no no definitely because 
that is very important for me yeah. because i know i have got a huge loan 40 lakhs is not very easy money at this stage of my life yes. so i really need to work as much as i can that's why you know i'm trying to do part time and side hustles to make sure i earn enough money mm. to save as well and to pay off my loan before mm, yeah. you know before i start my next career of my life i want to be debtless yeah. that's what everyone wants as well you know <coughs> actually ideally what i thought is uh in 2 3 years i should be able to pay back okay but but actually like uh i think this is a like reality after getting a job and after you actually see what you get in hand after mm. the taxes and everything yep. and after your house rent <laughs> and everything you actually hardly save anything okay. so it might take a while for me like at least 5 years i would say okay. to pay back my loan all right but yeah i mean ideally ideally i mean if you just think uh blindly you know because after your course you would think you might get a job for like 25000 pounds year yeah. or 30 you can even have 30 as an example so if okay. you get getting like 30000 pounds a year mm-hmm. you would think the 40 lakh loan you can just pay in two years but actually that's not the case because what you get in hand is less already after the tax and after yeah. that you need to pay your house rent you need to pay your electric bill gas bill water bill internet bill council tax it's a lot priya you are scaring me i'm not scaring right you i know i know <laughs> I, i mean i i really don't mean to scare you but you know you have your perks as well yes yes so you know wherever you are you always even in india the tax is not very less mm-hmm. to be honest yeah. it's 30% it, and it is a lot and here yeah. it's just like 20% for me now cool. and um so yeah until a slab you only get cut 20% but obviously you know you should see the brighter side where you see people who are always very supportive and warm yeah. and the lifestyle the scenic places i mean in general itself uk is a very 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 yes, touristy yes, place yeah. and especially i didn't i think a lot of people would have heard it was just like hogwarts yes. it is a very replica of harry potter very where you go which were building you see it is a replica of um, harry potter here and you feel like actually you're in a harry potter world mm. um You know, I was actually very peer pressured to watch Harry Potter before I come to Edinburgh because you I was like, "You haven't watched like, it." <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I've heard this a lot, so I actually did watch the whole thing before I could come here. I did, I did fall in love with it, but I don't know for some reason I didn't have friends who could force me to see it in my childhood. Okay. But I did see it before I could come to Edinburgh, and Edinburgh is just like Harry Potter. It's, it's amazing. So I would say if anyone. is having any confusion between university of manchester and university of edinburgh please go to university of edinburgh it's much much better that's pretty great man and uh, you know like uh, does university of edinburgh have something you know like uh, some sort of uh, you know like how do i uh, how do i say it let me just say cool so uh, is there something like that ki when uh, they are shortlisting some candidates like they are looking for some sort of skills like these are the skills you should have is there something like that and not really i would say because you know what um your passion is the best skill you can have if you really display that you want to do hr you know like if you because the sop the main question is like why do you want to do hr yeah. and why yeah. do you want to do in this college so you can say you know about the college it's very easy to say you know you i you can mm-hmm. say i researched yes. about edinburgh and google it looks pretty it's it's offering a lot of opportunities it's the most walkable city in the world mm-hmm. actually it has got the award of it's the most walkable city so in edinburgh you need to you don't need to take a bus or a tram okay. or a train very we want to go you can just walk all the time so it's much much um student friendly i would say mm-hmm. uh but the one thing you cannot search in google is like why do you want to do hr yes. you know that's like i explained yes. to you i was like i liked psychology and hr involved psychology so i like doing it so mm. the one thing you really need to display is your passion you don't have to do you don't even even if you don't have any experience you can say you know i'm so much interested in becoming a hr i started doing some online courses and yes, i feel yes, like yeah. this is what i want to do in the future so you always have to explain your passion in the way like you said you said i started an ngo mm. i'm starting a podcast because you're interested you want to do it yep. so i can see your dedication and your not giving up attitude in this character and that's what every college is looking for as well <coughs> I think that's definitely a great thing and one more great thing is like Indians are there everywhere you you <laughs> never alone yes, you're never that's alone true. that's true any college you go even any college in the corner of the world there'll be an Indian studying already there hmm. 
so used to privilege you know like so even when i was searching for university of edinburgh like i was searching in linkedin i was able to see a lot of alumni who's already finished their education so i contacted them mm-hmm. i was like was the course helpful was the course useful did you get a job after that i was very keen in it so yeah. always try to connect with your alumni after you know which college you want to join in yeah. and they will be always helpful and they'll be they can give you much more insights than you know because after coming to uk i didn't know little is the cheapest grocery store you can go to get your things like someone told me you know like don't go to tesco don't go to the other shops go to little okay so there's few things it's very specific to uk you know and you should be knowing that so your i think your mentors and your alumni are the best people who can you can you can reach to and they can help you with all the information so there's no particular skills to be exactly answering your question yeah all right and uh, like uh, how many uh, you know if i ask you like you have mentioned ki in university of edinburgh there are also many indians are available right so if i mm-hmm. have to ask you about about something like a percentage like you know could you please just tell me like how many percent what's the percentage of indians you mm-hmm. across in uh, you know uh, university of edinburgh uh, yeah yeah that's a very specific question let me think um okay i can give you an estimate like my class had like 40 to 45 or 45 students right. for hr itself right and we were at least 10 indians in it that's good that's good bhai mil jayenge yeah. wahan pe yeah i'm <laughs> telling you among 40 you at least had 10 so i think in general every course you go every class every class at least had like 20 30 percent indians in it okay that's great and uh, let's yeah. just you know uh, tell me something about the you know like the first flight you took while uh, from india to like you know uk what was the experience i was damn excited i was yeah. really excited because first of all oh my god you know getting through the airport checks is very important because you would have stuffed everything in your bags mm-hmm. and you pray every god god possible that they don't overweigh Yeah. and generally <laughs> always they overweigh yes. literally yeah. every and i don't know about others but i am a very very overpacker okay. i had like 10 jeans 20 tops and 20 sweaters and i had hoodies and everything it was definitely overweight and i had to bring all the masala items from india mm. and in Which, edinburgh it's yes, not exactly. very easy to get all your masala items and right? everything actually i actually thought yeah. ki over there like uh, it's uh, like it's uh, no. accessible or something like that All I right. mean, it's not very. Yeah, it's not. That's actually information I actually want to give out. So it's not very easy. You you can get all your Indian groceries here. Okay. In Manchester, it is super easily available. All right. In Manchester, it's available everywhere because Manchester, there's a lot and lot of Asian community settled here for generations. So okay. it's very easy for you to get. It's very easy for you to spot a dosa shop or a naan, but naan shop. But in Edinburgh, it's not quite easy to get the Indian grocery. There's a lot of Indian. restaurant don't mistake me yeah. but but the indian groceries it's not very easy to get cool and even if you get till till expensive when come back to india keep so this in mind. like uh, it's a really yeah, great information so yeah at the end of the day i had to pay extra luggage extra money for my luggage and then i yeah. got everything from yeah. india here and also one thing i uh, which might be helpful for others is indian post mm. indian post from india to uk is very cheap okay If you take any other courier service, they are very expensive, but Indian Post is the cheapest you could get. And actually, after coming here, my rice, my dals, <laughs> and everything got over. All so right. my mom had to send me all the groceries again, like after three, four months, and she sent me via Indian Post, and I got it like in what in a week, okay. and that was very helpful. That's pretty great. And uh, like uh, talking about like you have completed uh, uh, like uh, you know human resource course over there. So like, did you have received the CIPD certification uh, while doing the course, or like uh, you have to? Yeah, yeah. So in University of Edinburgh, it is um, uh, yeah, combined. It. Okay. So yeah, yeah, it is uh, definitely. Um, how do i say so the cipd qualification is actually one of the requirement mm-hmm, so yes. when you actually finish your course you the course itself is designed in terms of the cipd regulations and laws okay. so your because your education pattern itself was tailored according to the cipd requirements you do mm-hmm. get the certification later oh, that's pretty <laughs> great and uh, let's just you know talk about some challenges that you have faced in the uk 
Please don't say that I haven't faced any kind of challenges. That's no, 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 no. Yeah. That's not the case. I'm telling you, anywhere you go, obviously there are pros and cons and yeah. obviously you do face a lot. So I think my main problem was while finding a job. All right. It was not easy. Cool. It was definitely not an easy process. I had to... I, I actually was very uh, depressed during my three months of time where I couldn't get a job because I know I needed to get a job as soon as possible mm. so I can pay off my loan and that's the only thing I could think of. Yes. And the cost of living here is not very cheap. So you cannot keep getting <clears throat> you cannot keep keep getting money from your dad for like how many years. So yes, I know I need to get a full time job very soon. So so the problem here is either you needed to be you need to be a HR before mm -hmm. and you need to have HR experience so you can get a job immediately or mm -hmm. you don't have to need sponsorship mm -hmm. for you to stay here. Okay. But I needed both. I needed sponsorship so I can stay here for a longer time and I needed I did not have HR experience before because I was an engineer before. Even though yeah. I worked in a very good company, it was not a HR job. It was mm. a proper technical network consultant job. So I did not have HR experience and I I did I did want sponsorship. So Finding job was really, really hard. And also in Edinburgh, surviving the winter is actually a difficult part. It's not easy because okay. Edinburgh winters are very bad. I mean, people from North India might not feel it because I'm actually from South India. And right. I am actually very, I'm very comfortable with 30 to 45 degrees Celsius. And that's how I've been always. 32? So how when much? I came here, just, just, just hold on 45. 30 to 45. Bro, I am also from Kolkata, impulse. but uh, it's not like I, I can't bear with it at least 40. How can I? Eh? I don't yeah, know. I don't I'm, have any I'm, words. I'm born in, yeah, I'm born and brought up there and I was, I did my undergrad in VIT Velour. Mm -hmm. Velour is the hottest city in Tamil Nadu. So, yep. yeah. So, it was one of, yeah, so I've, I've, I've always been You should been enjoy, born you should enjoy UK, man. No, I am enjoying, but I'm telling you, winters actually, when they go in minus and when they go below mm, zero, yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. hard. That's you cool. can't go out, you cannot see anything, you know, you can't take your hand to touch your phone. Mm. Your hand freezes and you cannot feel your hand, it's actually very, pretty bad. And especially with Edinburgh, when I told you, the wind. And it's so windy, you can't see anything. I mean, you know, for example, in Edinburgh, they always do something called Christmas market. Yeah. So they have like an open exhibition, just like in India. They have candies, they have games, they have the roller coaster and everything. Yeah. I could not go stand there and take a picture. I could not stand there to enjoy it. It was so bad. It was so cold. I went to the Christmas oh. market. I just came back in 15 minutes because I couldn't withstand the cold. Even though you know how, how much of a jackets you have, mm -hmm. it gets very, very cold in from December to February. December to February is the time where it goes peak winter and it's a little bit difficult job for me for me to maintain you know be warm and just go through it uh, but I think other than that my job search was not easy because they ask uh, do you have a British passport or do you have like a sponsorship already and you would say um, no. no and they'll be like okay sorry then we'll call you later and they'll never call you back because companies to sponsor you it's not an easy job it's very mm. difficult for them it's very expensive for them yeah. so they don't they don't generally want to do it and also if you don't have any experience before they might be like how will i know you work better in hr because you don't have the experience yeah. so that both made me little difficult to find a job but yeah at the end i actually got a job and i'm very 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 happy in my job so Congrats. yeah at the end it's also a happy ending but it took a while for me to get there great man and uh you have mentioned that uh like it hurts an you like uh, the organization you're working with has uh, sponsored your uh you know yes yeah so they told me they they'll sponsor me after my visa expires so yeah Man. Uh, if I came to, you know, uh, if I come to UK or something like any any kind of places, I'm the one who actually contact you for the next job. Definitely, definitely. See, I am actually a HR, so I can refer yes, you exactly. and I can take your training as well. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, like, uh, what are the look? Okay, so let me just ask you these kind of questions. Cool. So, uh, you know, if I have to ask you, just tell me in a sentence, like, what uh, what's the experience you got as an international student? Okay, mm. it's it's bittersweet all right That's it is it is bittersweet definitely mm. because 
see sometimes you miss your own community and i'm telling you especially if you're from india it's very horrible for you because you find a lot of people who can speak in hindi but not your mother tongue your mm. mother tongue can be a very specific thing and that's not very easy for you to find so sometimes you feel lonely and sometimes you feel like you're not you're not part of any proper community as such so yeah. you might not have like a huge friends gang so you might be feeling lonely and the assignments and everything can be overwhelming you'll be depressed and everything is expensive so here so you don't want to spend so much either yeah. so to get a right set of friends and to settle in because see when your btec is like four years course obviously it will take one year to settle in yeah. the second yeah. year you find you you find some friends some people, and the third yes. year and fourth year you actually enjoy yeah. but when your whole course is just a year it's very hard for you to settle in and right away adapt to the um education system the culture here and everything so but also i had my own um you know uh perks as well i enjoyed people here especially the scottish people i'm telling you i they have my heart scottish people are the best they're very 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 sweet sweet people in the whole world i would say because i have traveled to few countries before mm -hmm. but scottish the native scottish first of all you cannot understand when they speak they speak english but you cannot understand their accent at all their accent is so thick yeah i'm like sorry can you please repeat what you're saying i don't understand them at all um but they're very very sweet they call you they address you as hi my love hi my darling so they're very 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 sweet people mm -hmm. they made me feel home you know like because yeah. the place where where i worked part time as well a lot of people used to come and they're like oh my god you're indian you look so nice do you miss your family and they they speak with you they connect with you like as if they known you for years mm -hmm. which is very very uh, really nice great. thing i would say yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'm a very, uh, I'm a very, uh, I'm a huge fan of scenic places, mm -hmm. trekkings, and everything. So, in general, UK was the thing for me. You know, UK was very scenic. Wherever you go, I love trekking. I went to a lot of trekking places. I did explore a few of, few places in Scotland, England, and I'm looking forward to go to Ireland as well. So, if you're a person who who likes exploring and traveling, UK is the place. So, my whole experience would be bittersweet until now. Cool, and uh, you have mentioned that uh, you are currently uh, working as a recruiter, and as well as about the you know like accent of the Scottish people, है ना? So tell me, yes. how did you manage? Uh, you know, like uh, over there, of course, like if you are a recruiter, then you have to call people and you have to take yes. on uh, the screen people. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. is it uh, you know helping you to uh, you know understanding the uh, Scottish accent in a in a good manner yeah. or something like that? I would say. See, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So British accent is a little bit. um family for you it's mm -hmm, easier yes, for you i yes. mean it's obviously different but you can understand yeah. but scottish accent they have their own slang which is very hard to understand at the first time and especially people from glasgow okay. glasgow people they have a very very thick um heritage and culture to their um like the people they're very passionate about glasgow in general and their accent is very thick But I think you just get used to it. I mean, definitely you don't you don't understand ten times, but eleventh time you try you to yes, you yes. sort of yeah you sort of understand what they're saying. You try to make out what they're saying, and the fifteenth time or the twentieth time you're talking with them, you know exactly what they're saying. So I think in time it should not be a problem. See, I think that's the case with anything. If you don't like anything, if you don't understand anything, obviously it'll be difficult for you in the start. But yes. in the duration of the time. Time is the answer for everything. In a in duration of time, you obviously will understand, and you will get used to it, and you will get comfortable with it. So, you should just wing it for a while, and then you will obviously get it. All right, and uh, you know, like, did you have received any kind of help from your alumni? Uh, like, uh, you know, while you're searching for some jobs? Yes, yes, yes. definitely so even during my dissertation time mm -hmm. so my dissertation was qualitative and i had to take like interviews i just contacted only my alumni and then they were very helpful they said oh you know priya actually i have been in the same place and i have gone through the same struggle of you know trying to find participants so yeah. they were very very eager to say yes i want to do it and everyone were very definitely helpful and i think our college itself uh did arrange a few meetings with alumni where we did get to meet them and mm -hmm. we had a platform yes, where we yes, could ask yeah, any yeah. questions so in that case college is also very helpful and alumni also you know it will also help you to network people yes yes that's true yes exactly and uh, like uh, it's uh, <clears throat> Would you please tell me? Like I know that uh, I'm asking so many questions, but uh, these are the last two. Like I'm, I'm just promising. So no worries. Please no tell worries. me, like, yeah, uh, what is yeah. the average salary? Uh, you know, a working professional uh, they might, you know, 
I think out of that, you know, after completing two or three years of experience in a same field, so what the CTC they might expect. Okay, uh, so it definitely depends on what course you're doing. So yeah. I can talk about HR because yeah. finance, accounting people, business analytics people actually do get a lot okay. for the starting itself. But I can talk for HR. So HRs. So if you're a fresher, if you don't have any experience, obviously the jobs you can get is HR yeah. assistant mm -hmm. or HR coordinator or HR administrator. All right. So these kind of jobs, the starting salary is actually from 20k pounds mm -hmm. per year to 25. Right. And if you do have some work experience, you start getting from 25 to 28. All right, that's that's good. And uh, like any kind of tips or any uh, anything for me and the viewers? Um, yeah, so I would say first of all, when you want to get into abroad, just forget about the job search and everything. Mm -hmm. Just focus on how you can develop yourself. Okay how you can nurture yourself or how to build your resume when you go for a job you know that's what i was focusing on when i came here you know i made sure that i have something in my resume when i go to interviews i can talk about something so mm. i joined in multiple clubs within edinburgh i made sure i did a internship in hr itself so when i go to a interview i can tell them see i've not worked as a hr before but during my one year in uk i have i have made sure that i have participated in different different mm, events yes. conferences yep. and i've made sure i have interacted with a lot of business hr people itself who can actually impart their knowledge so even when, when we were in edinburgh university so they took us to amazon mm. uh, warehouse in scotland which is the biggest uh, warehouse for amazon in the uk okay so we went there and we met with the hrs in amazon itself and they were able to explain us how is the process happening in their thing how the covid affected them during the covid how much they have to fire and how much they have to hire again and all those things so which was helpful so i was able to use all those experiences in my interview mm. so make sure when you come for this one year how you, how can you use efficiently this one year to build your resume and when you go somewhere else you have a story to tell for yourself and you should be able to be in a position where you should be confident about yourself you know you should not be like i don't have experience in how i'm not sure how will they give me a job you should be like see i've done multiple things how can they reject me you should be having that mm, kind of yes, confidence sure. yeah. and you should be able to present yourself with that kind of um, love for yourself you know that's what i would say so if your passion speaks for yourself then you'll be able to have much better confidence when you're presenting yourself in interview so this one year make sure you come here just do not i mean obviously you enjoy the culture here party with your friends go to clubbing and pubbing and everything but also make sure that you build your resume here cool so that was it man thank you so much Priya. like uh, it was really really great having you and uh, if no definitely I am doing one thing. I am. Uh, I have already done that. I have, uh, uh, you know, uh, like pasted all of the our links, like your LinkedIn ID, my LinkedIn ID, the LinkedIn ID of India Abroad, everything. If anyone have to reach out to Priya, please do. Like she is a really, really, really great person. And uh, yeah, that's the thing, man. Have a really nice day. Definitely. Yeah, I'm telling for anyone. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me in LinkedIn. I'm always active in there. So anytime I'm very happy to help and I'm very thankful for you to invite me for this podcast because I'm I'm happy I was able to help even Thank at least so one. Much, if it was one, at least I'll be very happy about it. Thank you so much, Jay. Thank have you so nice much and day. have a very nice day. Yeah. Bye bye. You too. Bye bye.